Right, okay. Well, it's about eight o'clock, so I think you always beat me, Kira, Nancy, Sandy. And uh, today's subject, do you see the slide behind me? Uh, it's a, uh, uh, our topic is a, I mean, our subject is topics in the book of Genesis. And we, we talk about today about slandering or defaming, what in Hebrew lesson how evil tongue. So uh, where where is it uh, found in the book of Genesis? You all know it's a, in the story of Joseph. He was a, the Torah says that a, he brought the evil tongue to the, about their, their evil tongue to their father Jacob. So he was slandering or defaming uh, his brother. So that's the topic we are, that's the place in, a, in, a, in the book of Genesis. So as, as we always do, we try to learn it and to see where it is in the book and what can, what can derive from it about slandering. By the way, uh, the term uh, Lashon Hara uh, is a different from the English defaming and uh, slandering. Uh, the classical defaming is always uh, defined as speaking bad uh, lies about somebody. Slandering is defined in a dictionary as speaking uh, lies, uh, spreading lies about somebody. Lashon Hora includes speaking lies, but also speaking the truth about somebody. Bad, bad things, but the true things about somebody. And more, we'll, turn, we'll learn about uh, several categories uh, of uh, Lashon Hara. Now, the term Lashon Hara, evil tongue, you know, it's different from the English bad mouth, let's say. Uh, evil tongue already tell you that we are talking about something evil. Evil is always in the eyes of who? Of, uh, in the Torah, in the eyes of uh, the merciful attribute uh, YHVH, yeah? So uh, she thinks it's her, in her spectacles, uh, either she, she love you or hate you, and something that he, she hates is defined as evil. What could she hate? What would she hate? Obviously, if she's merciful, she had one who is the opposite. If he's a cold, indifferent, heartless, indifferent to other people's fate, that makes him the person evil in her, her eyes. Uh, also, if person uh, exchange her with idols, uh, is evil. If you look at the uh, list of the King of Judea, yeah, in the Book of Kings, so it says uh, this is this king uh, set on the throne of David, and he was evil in the eyes of Hashem, always evil in the eyes of Hashem. What did he do? Either he took advantage of the poor or the widows, and he was evil in that sense. A cruel and indifferent to other people like, or he worship idols. That's a simple. So evil is all is different from a sinner. A sinner is one who transgress the law. But evil, and I'll show you on the, uh, her reaction to your kid, to somebody's character, to what he does. Uh, and the reaction 
you either either she loves you and you get so much benefit from that love and uh, benefit. Uh, she she loved Noah. He found face in her eyes, so he was saved from the flood. If she loves you, it's a great benefit. But if she hates you, that's not such a good thing. She hated Sodom and Gomorrah, and she overturned them by fire. So that's as far as the term, uh, term special term, evil tongue. A translation from Russian or so from now on I may use it the Hebrew term Russian Russian or Russian is strong Ara is evil so if I say Russian or out of habit you know I'm talking about uh, evil tongue and we'll discuss what it means now uh, it's a uh, uh, in the story of uh, Joseph, he says uh, Joseph brought the evil tongue to the father. So Rashi explained everything, everything he, they saw, he saw, he, he, used, he told, he told, everything bad he told to his father, even if it was, even if it was true. We will talk about different different explanation of this verse. You will see in this section, you will see all the type of possible uh, slandering. Now, before we read it, we are going to write a few, few verses, read the few verses, as you usually do. Uh, let's pay attention to the fact that uh, here, slandering or lesson horror appears in the first time in the Torah. And we have a rule of thumb. The rule of thumb says, it's very important rule of thumb. If you have a, if you have a, a important concept appearing the first time in the Torah, Look there around the text, around the concept, the text around the concept, because there you will find exactly what the Torah means, want to tell us, what, to, what, what the Torah wants us to know about this concept. For instance, a famous example, uh, if you want to know anything about Elohim, Elohim, the attribute of uh, justice, so the first time it appears in Genesis verse one, it says in the beginning, Elohim, the attribute of justice, created the sixth day, the heaven and earth. So it tell you, so Elohim is a builder, he's a judge, he can build, he can destroy, he, he created nature, everything you want to know about Elohim appears there. The same thing with YHVH. Look where it appeared the first time, and you will find what what she, what what it is. You want to know what Israel is? You look at the first time it appeared in the, in the Bible. Where is it? In the story of the angel when Jacob fought with the angel, and his name was changed to Israel. What? If you want to def to see what Israel is, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if you call yourself Israel. You know, you can say, I, I replace Israel. I am now Israel. But to be Israel, you need to meet the, to, 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 to meet the, the criteria what the, the verse tell you about Israel. So when you fight with an angel, his name is changing, it changes to Israel from Jacob. So if you read that, you will understand what Israel is. And it cannot be replaced by somebody else who doesn't fit the criteria. So uh, now the same goes for slandering and national. Here, the, the, here the, the first time it appears in Torah. So I expect now to find many things that many insights to the slandering that otherwise I will not I will not see. 
you see there is another place in the Torah, the slandering of national appeal, like uh, in the story of the spies. You know, Moses sp spent, uh, sent spies to the land of uh, Israel, Canaan, and they returned and they told bad news, true bad news, about the land. We cannot conquer it. It's too, uh, uh, the, the Canaanite are too strong. It was true, but bad news. So the Torah called it Diba, slander, the same term it used here, Diba. So, but there uh, is the second time it appears. The first time it appears here, and if we want to find insight, what's the impact, what, what, why it is so evil, and what the impact of it, it's here, not, not so much in the story of the spies. So we need to write, to read, we're gonna read the, the section carefully and try to derive from it information about slandering, the speaking of Sonora, that otherwise we would we would have missed. Now let's if I talk about the so before we dive and read it, let's see the context. So it, it appears in a story, in the stories of Jacob, maybe the last one. But we already noticed that the, all the stories of Jacob revolve around what? Seeking justice, seeking civil recognition, to be the firstborn, to be compensated, to get the, to, to not to be cheated, by his father-in-law um, to, uh, to, to work for a decent salary. Or he never fight about religion. He always fight about seeking justice. His daughter is raped by the male son, abducted. That's civil issue. Okay, so all the story of Jacob from the beginning to the end revolve around just seeking justice, which is number five, commandment number five of, of Noah, of Adam, yeah? Dinim, justice, seeking justice, is a positive commandment. You need to seek justice. Uh, and it's number, consider number five, given to Adam in Eden, and number five in the, in the seventh commandment of Noah as well. So this is, so, the moment you see the name of Jacob, then you know the story of all, must have all about seeking justice. And indeed, uh, you can say this last story here about Jacob also about uh, justice. When you, when you speak badly or lie, you spread lies about somebody, he can call you to the court because you, you, you cause damage in a civil order, so there's a nice civil order issue. It's recognized by almost all nations on earth. That aspect of uh, slandering, speaking, uh, uh, spreading lies, def defaming. But here, interesting, there is another component. It's not just seeking justice. Uh, it depends who speak the justice, who speak about. Since, since Jacob is promoted to the level of Israel, since he is considered, he and his family are known as a fearing of God, recognizing God, Fearing God, if they misbehave and they sell the, the the brother, they throw him to the pit and sell him to to be to sex slave in Egypt. If they behave like this, it's a desecration of God's name because 
people will look at it and they say, oh, you know, the Torah didn't help them. Look, these people are not, they know Torah, they learn Torah so much, and look what they do. So this dishonoring God's name, so that called desecration of God's name. And the secretion of God's name is commandment number six of Adam. So here, uh, as the story is unveiled, we are moving now from simple number five to, again, committing injustice, committing damage by, by slandering, but in a component, major component of Number six, uh, which is the secretion of God's name. So the uh, end of the, how uh, beautiful it is that uh, uh, the Torah start with the idolatry. Adam is created, then adultery, and then bloodshed, and theft, the story of Abraham, and now number five, Jacob. And now the Torah ends, the book, the book ends, is number six. So this, this, you see here how the book is completely structured intentionally by, by Moses, uh, covering the sixth commandment of Adam. And but that's uh, now what what I am saying here is is it, it, it give you the tone, a new tone to slandering. Uh, the, the, the tone of slandering, the Torah speaks about slandering here, is not just, okay, you created damage, now you will pay it. Call it to the court, the court will say you need to pay $1,000 to the damage you cause, or a million dollars because you're causing damage. That's not the issue. The issue here is evil. First of all, it's evil. Evil uh, in the eyes of Hashem. It's completely new dimension. Hashem hates his, uh, uh, those people who, who speak badly about other people. And the component of the secretion of God's name. So this is a new, a new dimension that you don't see it in a civil uh, in a civil court, you know. You are in a civil court when you call some people for judgment, uh, the judge will say only, only assess the civil damage it cause. But the Torah see it or God hid in another and he say is adding here another dimension on top, which is you become the the, the slanderer or the person who defame you is becoming, is evil for some reason. Even in the, in, the, in the eyes of Hashem, not in the eyes of Elohim, in the eyes of Hashem. Hashem will look at the heart. Remember, that's to make you evil. You evil and you desecrate, and if you, if you are, are considered, if you are, People know you as a, a, a God fearer and uh, abiding by the law. If you do that, you cause uh, the secretion of God's name. So that's again all, all this we could derive just by looking at the position of the story within the book. You see, we compare where it is located at the end of the book, and it is the last. The last commandment of Adam, and it's moving from number five to number six. And with that, we will finish Book of Genesis. Number seven it was, the, of Noah was only added by Noah to enforce our fight against bloodshed. So it's a no, nothing new there, just in, uh, in, uh, a way to overcome bloodshed. When Abraham was uh, was given circumcision, it's only to enforce his stance against theft. 
he, we, we belong to God. Everything belongs to God, and so on. So number seven, eight, and nine, whatever commandments are, are not new things. They are only enforcing the basic six of Adam. And the rest of the Torah, including Sinai, 613, are only like a branch of a tree whose trunk is, the, the trunk of the tree is the Adam six commandment. And every Noahide who respects himself should be extremely aware, should be well familiar with the story and, and should distinguish it. Those, understand those commandments and uh, distinguish between the Adam six and the sevens of what the seven, eight, and nine were. So, so we are uh, we, before we dive into reading and uh, and analyzing the word. Uh, another thing about the location. Another before. Since it, the, the end of the story, we see the, the, the consequence. Now, the speaking uh, lesson horror about, about uh, uh, Joseph spoke lesson horror about, about his brothers, it's not a simple thing. The story caused Jacob exile to Egypt. Subsequently, it caused Pharaoh to be drowned in the sea. Subsequently, it caused Israel to travel 40, 40 years in the desert and to enter the whole history of humankind has changed because of this slander. It's enormous. It's an almost impact on the world. That's why slandering, at least speaking national, is so awesomely uh, uh, disregarded as a shepherd, disgusted by this person, because we, we, the Torah telling you that you never know what you think is a small thing. Speaking national about somebody else, you think, oh, it's nothing. The whole human history, indeed, you cannot see Islam, you cannot see Christianity, everything has changed afterward because of this slandering. Small thing. Another, another point that we can derive from the position of the, of the story here at the end, if you look at the text, since at the beginning of the story, uh, at the uh, chapter 37, let's open it because we're going to read it a few verses. So 37, and from that moment on, the name of Hashem disappears, basically from the story, apart from two, two places, three places, small places. But the entire story of the selling and Joseph in Egypt and uh, the, uh, Jacob coming, coming down to Egypt, the entire story from here to the end of the book is under the name of Elohim. Where is, where is, where is YHVH? She ran away from because of the slandering. It smells so bad she ran away from us. So the rabbi said, you know what? Slandering make us smell so bad. So the Hashem is, is disgusted, is, is disgusted with us. She cannot stand the bad smell. Remember Noah, when he did the opposite. He offered, he, he pulled out his heart on Mount Moriah and Hashem smelled a good smell. She likes it. She didn't like the smoke, the, the, the smoke of the flesh. She liked what, what she heard from him, from what she saw on his heart. He didn't say a word, but she, she read his heart. 
And she said, what a good smell. Here is just the opposite. What a bad smell it is. So she ran away from the rest of the group. The Shekhina ran away from us, from anyone who, who speak less than her. So what? She said, oh, Shekhina ran away. Oh, you know what happened? The Shekhina ran away from us. We are left with a, with a Lokim sitting there in a heavenly court. Elohim never ran away. He's there always here. He will always be here until the Sabbath comes. So when she is not around, the rabbi said Elohim took the opportunity and, so to speak, and exercised the old prophecy that he gave, the creed that he told Abraham that his descendant will be enslaved in Egypt. So the Exile in Egypt start here when the Shekhin ran away from them because of their bad, bad, bad smell. So the Exodus start here with the slandering. And that's why they put incense at the entrance of the Holy Temple. Or the rabbi said, Why do you need the incense? to take away the bad smell from the Jewish people when they speak less on her. See, the incense on the, on the golden altar, the entrance, it was not that the God would smell good, beautiful smell. He doesn't need it. It, it was compromised by the prayer, God forgive us for any loss on her that he spoke. So if the Shekhina ran away from us, uh, the exile, so she, she went to exile, and Israel went to exile. The rabbi, uh, the Zohar, if you want, concluded that uh, we are, Israel is in exile as long as the Shekhina is in exile. Which means nowadays that Israel is returning to the land of Israel. After 2,000 years, we have uh, Israel with hundreds of thousands of people learning Torah there. Israel is back to the land who is booming under, under Israel. It was a desert under, under the swamps under the Arabs. Thousands of years, as Mark Twain Describe it completely deserted land. He, he traveled there for days, he didn't see even one person, only robbers, robber, robber, robbers, thieves. That's my Mark Twain in the late 19th century. And now go to Israel and see what, what's going on there. So Israel is back, um, the Jewish people are back to Israel. And if you marry it, we'll see the Shekhinah coming back. So the Shekhinah and Israel going together. If we are in exile, she is in exile. Or, you, or if you want, I can say it. If she is in exile, then we are in exile. If she comes back, we come back. So having all said all that, let's read just uh, two, two, two or three uh, verses, chapter 37, who, who, who volunteer? And then we'll discuss it. Okay. Um, let, let's read it. Who wants to read it? Somebody volunteer? 37? I'll, I'll read it, Rabbi. Okay. Uh, how far did you want me to read? No, only only two, two, three, two, three. Okay. Jacob settled in the land of his father's sojournings in the land of Canaan. These are the chronicles of Jacob. Joseph, at the age of 17 years, was a shepherd with his brothers by the flock. 
but he was a youth with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph would bring evil reports about them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his sons since he was a child of his old age and he made him a fine woolen tunic. His brothers saw that it was he whom their father loved most of all his brothers, so they hated him and could not speak to him peaceably. Okay, that's enough. So we are going to discuss it, but to make it easier for, for us all to, to, to see where we are going, uh, when you analyze the section, let's see uh, what is what the Talmud says about the slandering or lashon hara, and then we see if we can define it like an like a mental exercise. We see if we can define those categories in the story. So I am going to tell you the four type of lashon hara that the Talmud count, and then we'll see them one by one and we'll try to identify it in a story. And you can help me. So number one category is what we would call the defaming. Motsi, in Hebrew, Motsi Shemra, he, 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 he exit, he put out Lashon Hara, which means by the by definition of the Rambam, he speaks lies, spread lies on the, on a fellow man, and he hurt him in order to hurt him. We would call it in England defaming, slandering, and you can you can sue somebody for that. Of course, we speaking lies is forbidden because the Torah said uh, uh, you should you should. Uh, 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 go, uh, you should never speak lie, he said there somewhere. But, uh, and uh, how much more so to speak lies about somebody else? But uh, uh, here, speaking lies in only one category. Let's put it on the top. Now, I'm, I'm continuing the Rambam. The Rambam now, to say, the second category of, of, of uh, Lashon Hara is spreading bad news, true bad news about somebody. Wow, that's not uh, covered by any law. I'm telling the truth about somebody, about my neighbor, about my friend, about his in the eyes of somebody else. What did I do? Did I do something wrong? Yes. You 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 transgress lashon hara, and the Torah uh, elsewhere says uh, in the curses in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, uh, um, a is a wow to the person or curse is the person who has hit who is hidden as a fellow man uh, in a clandestinely. So you speak badly about somebody, something else about somebody, in the eyes of somebody. So you speak, Ruben speak in the eyes of Shimon about Levi that did something bad. And Levi doesn't hear. So you can cause a lot of damage, uh, but uh, Levi may not have never know about it. And that's that's he clandestinely, and that's part of the curses that they're given on our Ebal when we cross the law the land. So we'll, we'll see if we can identify them, define it here. So again, the first the first category is speaking lies. Uh, bringing, uh, exiting, uh, spreading out lies. The second one, which is you speak the truth, the Torah call it mevi. He brings in. So you bring in into your home, you speak, your friend, you sit by coffee table and you whisper to him, you know what happened to Joe? You know, 
something very bad. He, he ran away to, to Las Vegas with a, a consecutive. So that's true. But it's a, he kind of secretly between that's called a V as opposed to exit to, to spread out. So we, we saw two categories. Third category that we try to identify in the story is gossiping. Simply gossiping. Also forbidden. Uh, gossiping means here something special. I, you know, you tell your friend, you know what I heard from, from Rebecca was telling about Caroline? So you didn't hear it directly. You just heard uh, what Rebecca said to Caroline to, to, uh, about, uh, about uh, Nancy, about somebody else. So, so you, you, you gossip it. Something may be good or bad. So that's category number three. It's also covered under the prohibition. And the Torah actually forbid it explicitly in, in, in uh, Leviticus 29. You should not gossip among your uh, fellow men. Now, number four. Number four is the easiest one. Is a consider is the easiest one. You, you never speak in the open, but you just hint that something bad about Joe. Oh, you said Joe. I know something about but I will never I never speak about it. You hint that something bad about Joe. Oh, uh, you, know, you I better not speak about it. The, the, the fellow who hear it understands something bad. Uh, uh, happen, or uh, Joe did something very bad, but you don't you don't want to speak about it, so that's called dust. Hint hint of personal. It's a dust. The, in in a, a term, a, the the Talmud use a dust of personal. It's not personal itself. It's like a, a dust. A, uh, it's a minimum, low grade. And then Talmud said that uh, three, pe three people are damaged, are being killed by the Shonora, the one who tell it, the one who listen to it, and the person who speak you, about whom you speak. And the punishment is worse for the one who hear it and don't reject it. Interesting. Punishment is worse for the person who hear it and, and don't say and, and and don't reject. So now let's uh, let's go to the section we just read, and we'll see uh, read it. And our, our task is to identify these categories here, and some other point that can highlight the issue. So let's read. It. He said. He started by uh, Jacob settled in the land of his uh, father's sojourning. Why do why the Torah says the land of his father's sojourn? But the Rashi, there are many explanations, but Rashi had he wanted to honor honor his father. That's strange. I didn't know, I wouldn't think about it in this term, but that's what Rashi said, it's not incidentally. Because honoring is the core of Russian law. Why people speak Russian law? You diminish the honor of somebody else, or you increase your, your own honor. You try to embold um, your own status, your own honor, on account of diminishing or humiliating, diminishing the honor of somebody else. That's what really, so at the core of Russian law is honoring. Now you can honor, you can honor, uh, you, know, you can honor uh, another person. There are several categories of honoring. Uh, I don't want to speak too much about it, but is honoring your father, your a person, every person, should be shared, should be honored as a person. There is honoring of your parent. 
uh, there is honoring of your teachers, of your king, and most of the, uh, the, the supreme honor is, is God as a king. And, and God honoring God as a king because God is everything. God is your father and mother. God is your, your teacher. Give us the Torah. God is your king. And God is God. Creating a creator. So uh, when so the issue is not only you diminish the honor of somebody else, but you also uh, dishonor uh, God honor because what? If you are, as we spoke uh, uh, earlier, if you are known to be Torah scholar or Torah uh, fearer, you are you are good Noahai, uh, so to speak, and you walk the walk. And then you stumble about something very lousy, like like, a, um, like you know what? You defame the entire movement, and you defame the honor of God. So honor is at the core of lesson law. So, as again, there there is a two component here. Uh, the damage and the fact that you become you dishonor God and God is disgusted with you. You smell so bad in the God. Now let's move on. This are uh, so this is introduction to the section. Now the Torah says these are the histories of the co of the chronicle, if you want, or of the offspring of Yaakov. I would expect here the whole list of children. These are the children, these are the offspring of Jacob. Then he says, Yo Yosef was 17 years old. Oh, where is Reuben, Shimon, and Lee? Oh, they are not accounted here. Yosef is, a, is, is represented as, a, as the firstborn, as the only born, only, only born, only son. These are the offspring of Jacob, Yosef, because he saw a hint that he loved. Joseph equal to all the other brothers. He was only 17 years old, and he was shepherd with his brother, and he was a, 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 a boy, a lad, young man, 17 years old, which means Rashi said he did, he did something that boys do, but teenager. Uh, they are careful about their hairstyle, about the clothing, about the more they 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 are uh, they they look at the other sex or other sex look at it. He's and, and he's also prone to say bad things about somebody. That's what children do. Now he is a boy with Bila and the children of Bila and Zilpa, the the wife of his father. Where are the children of Rachel and Leah? So let's make it story short. As you remember, Jacob had two wives, Rachel and Leah. Rachel passed away. She had two at a young age, 33, I believe. And um, she, she left two children, Benjamin and Joseph. Joseph was the first. He was eight, eight years older than Benjamin. So here is 17, so Benjamin was only uh, eight years younger, nine, at that point. And that's Rachel. Leah had Reuben, Shimon, Levi, and Judah, four, four major sons who were, who were considered the, the, the main core of his, of his children, high level, in the, in, the, in the hierarchy of the family. Leah was the most revered one, because Rachel passed away. And Zilpa and Bila, if you remember, they were, their story was, originally they were maiden, but then they were given, the, Jacob married her, and each one gave 
the Bill and Zilpa gave birth to some, some sons. These were considered the lower in the hierarchy of the family. That's natural. You can say blame, uh, you can say it's not wrong, it's not right, but that's what that's a natural thing. So Leah, the four children of Leah were considered uh, the most uh, most uh, prominent part of important part of the family. And the other were the, the children of the maiden. Now interesting, so where is Joseph in the story? He, he elected to be with the with the with this with the with the children, the son of the of the maiden. Does it show on his good heart? Or does it show something else? The uh, commentary debate here. But the fact is that he was there with the with the children of of Leah and Bethilpa, not with the with the prominent uh, uh, Reuben and Shimon and Leah this, of, of Leah. And is the Torah says he brought the the evil tongue, the batam ra'a, to their father. Now, what are the possibility here? Possibility number one that he spoke the truth. Bad, bad thing about the truth. Uh, but, uh, bad, bad, true, bad things about them. That's category number two. And what so? So he was uh, one explanation is he was a he was a long, he was shepherding uh, shep, he shepherded with, along with the children of Bila and Zilpa, and he told his father about their misbehavior. So there were the children of maiden of the maiden. And they were not careful about the law. They were too. Uh, if, if if had he told lie lies about them, he was considered category number one. Transgressing category number one, defaming, spreading lies. Had he told the new the good as Rashi said, he told the, the truth about them. He transgressed category number two. What could he tell bad things about them? Well, I should give you an example. He, that they, uh, they ate uh, flesh torn from a living animal. You recognize it. That's Noahite Psalm number seven. So they ate flesh and they ate blood. And also they lasted the last local women transgress uh, uh, transgressing um, uh, adultery, if you want. So all those two things cause the Shekhinah to run away from them. But the fact that the fact is that he was telling his father go a, 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 a bad news about a true bad news that fit the category of number two. So we only covered two of them. Had he spoken lies, he would have transgressed number one. Could be, could be it was lies. There are some commentaries that said he spoke lies. How could it be that they ate such a uh, meat uh, uh, torn from the flesh? It's, it's impossible, it was lies. So he, he, in that case, he spoke I spoke clearly, uh, uh, he exit, he, he, he pulled out the short small spread lies, or he spoke the truth. Number three possibility that the commentary engaged here, uh, he brought their, their debat. They, they slandering about each other. He, he talked, to, he brought to his father what he heard from Bila's son about Leah's son. So they were, they were, they were gossiping about the, about the other group, each group gossiping about the other. Transgressing number three. Could be, 
it fits, it fits the text. Now we come to the category number four, which is thus, the, the, low, the lowest, the most, the less important one. Let's see what, what it is. Because the Torah says in Israel, loved Yosef because of Amor's son, he, because he is a bad school name, is a child of his old age. That's one explanation of the verse. Ben Skunim could be because he was smart. He, he learned, the Midrash said that he learned, uh, maybe Rashi said that, that uh, Joseph, he taught Joseph all the, all the things that he learned, he had learned from Torah Academy from Shem and Abel. Shem and Abel. Shem was Torah's son. And uh, when he was young, Jacob, he ran away to Lava, to Lavan. He spent 16 years with the academy. So uh, he, is, he, he is the one who taught, he selected Joseph to teach him the body, of, enormous body of, 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 uh, of the Torah that he inherited, that he, he had learned from Shem, the, the son of Noah. And, and the middle said that helped him, that helped Joseph later in his life. Anyhow, the simple explanation, he loved Joseph simply because he was a, he was all, himself was an old man. And this is a young boy that, uh, that naturally he loves more than the older sons. And he made for him, who told it for him, a, wool, a woolen tunic, a fine woolen tunic, Pasim is stripped. So he had a, 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 a stripped coat. Uh, the Talmud says, first of all, you need two things we learn it. So a person should never single out one, one of his sons from the other because of jealousy it will not. Number two, what he did here, he knew that they hate him because of slandering. So he, he, he showed his favorism by giving him in public a, a stripped a precious a, a coat. Or, uh, then it means you show there is a, there, it's called the dust of Lashonara because it, it, when you do that, when, 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 when you do that to somebody, you show him favorism. And you speak goodly about him in the eyes of people who hate him, that cause the other people to to hate the person even more. And so that that's number four category. And the rabbi said from here, look how careful a person should be. Jacob only only committed; he didn't rebuke him, failed to rebuke him. So he listened, and God he said the person who listened. And and is uh, guilty the, mo the most guilty among the three that the Lashonara kills. So it's a fa failure because it didn't stop him. Secondly, he showed fa he showed more favorism in the eyes of the son other son who already hating him. That's that's like pouring gasoline on 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 a fire. Uh, that's that's number four. No, it's a small thing, only kutone, but uh, without speaking anything. But that's uh, that caused uh, the, the children, the other brother, to hate him so much they couldn't even speak to Joseph to say hello to him or peace. So how careful a person should be with the notion how. Now, I want to. To, uh, to to see uh, about about the Allah. So the, it looks like you cannot say uh, you cannot speak any Lashon Hara about somebody that's not true. Uh, I mean, there is a book of Chafetz uh, Chaim. You go into detail, and there are there are. When 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 you when when it's done in to save somebody, like before marriage, you speak, you, you tell the truth about somebody, 
or in business, if you inform something, or in politics and so on, there are situations with uh, like newspaper uh, articles that spread news. Uh, it's not considered a son hour because it's in favor of the public. In fact, you cannot read, you can run society without it. So, uh, I'm going to detail. Uh, here we see only the frame, but the rule is, is generally forbidden, apart from the situation where it's done for somebody's favor, is in favor, to save life, to save marriage or business. Now, I want to end uh, with the observation uh, about the end, the location of the story in the Duke of Genesis. We already see that it's number six about the uh, defamation of God, um, the secretion of God's name, the remedy is sanctification of God's name. So from now, the rest of the story is that uh, although there is a secretion of God's name, but the family, finally, especially Joseph and uh, Judah, uh, uh, sanctify the life of Hashem and actually repair, repair the damage so you can repair the desecration by sanctification. Uh, Joseph put, put his life, he didn't, he, he, was, he, he elected to go to jail rather than sleeping with, him, with, that, with that woman. And he, that sanctification of God's name. And Judah did the same thing. Another thing I want to show you, very important thing. So, you know, we could go on and on and speak many things, but a major point. The Torah end up here with a with a big carpet, which is a our seeking our ego seeking to glorify ourselves by speaking us and all about somebody else. So the core of this, the Torah, core of uh, is is our ego. Look at chapter one, the beginning of the book, when God said the creation of Adam, God said in plural, let us speak, let us uh, make Adam in our form and our image, he speak in plural. And the angel of remember asking God, our king, until now you just gave order. Why do you speak suddenly in plural? Creating Adam. Don't you are you not don't you feel that idolaters? We'll read the verse and you speak in plural, let us, and you will think there is more than one God. You open the door for idolatry. And the answer was profound. He said, I take the risk of idolatry by speaking plural because I want to teach Adam modesty. I create Adam with such a big ego that I know from all the idols that he is going to worship, his own ego will prevail forever. And here we are. We may overcome idolatry of wood and stone. We, want, we may overcome idolatry of worshiping the sun and the moon and astronomy. We may even overcome idolatry of worship science. Now we worship science. One day we will come to the conclusion science is just a tool keeping us from God, but it shouldn't worship it. It cannot solve our problem. So we can overcome it more or less easy, so to speak. It takes time, but you will overcome all the idols in the world. A part, the most difficult one. Who is that? Our ego. That ego will push us to worship it forever. And, and Hashem said, I cannot stand, I cannot, I'm quoting the Talmud. I, Hashem, the merciful one, I think he said, because she is so modest. He said, I cannot, I simply cannot be with it with a person who has big ego in the same room. If he is here, I am out. 
And if he is modest, like I am, like Moses, I will, I will give me prophecy. And that's the importance of, that's the story here. That's why the book of Genesis end up with, with our big ego pushing us to do Lashonora to show that indeed, after all this history of all the chapters that we read, could be that we can overcome all the idol worshiping in the world. But one idol will haunt us forever, our own ego. Any questions from us, for me? Okay, a lot of things to think about. And uh, I, I love you being with me because I know that people read or listen to the videos, but it's not the same as seeing you all in a room, like working differently. So have a good Shabbat, thank you, and uh, be well. Thank you, Rabbi. It's very thank interesting. You. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you.